What's up everyone? Today we're going for a bit of a ride. We do have a little bit of a crash at the end here, so keep an eye out for that. But also, as I'm on my KX250, it makes me think about a new bike, which could be a good option for me. A lot of the riding I do is kind of single track, hair scramble races, and then a bit of motocross. And although the KX250 is an excellent bike, it's, it's you know, it's got its downfalls. So, what we want to compare it to today is the KX250X. So we're going to look into the KX250 and the KX250X for 2022 and go down to the deep dive of what is different between these two bikes and hopefully I don't crash before then. Obviously they're based off the same machines but there is a few differences between them. Starting right off the KX250X, so this is the Enduro Cross or GNCC style race machine. This one sits about 5 mils lower than the KX250 and this is a design change to change the tweak and geometry of the bike. That way it's just going to ride super nicely and be a little more forgiving although not as aggressive and not as much handle barb weight so you're not going to be able to hammer those corners as fast you know to a degree. It does weigh more, not by much. You're looking at 240 pounds compared to 237 on the race model. Um, it's about the same, but those little bits of weight will add up, especially over a longer race like a GNCC or a hair scramble. You know, you can feel the difference with uh, a couple pounds there. They are the exact same fuel tank size, which I find very interesting, both 6.2 liters. I do ride this one in hair scrambles, we're talking, you know, an hour and a half to two hour races, and I have not ran out of fuel and I haven't had to stop. It's pretty empty by the end, but it's it's pushing it, but it, it's okay. I would prefer to have a little more safety room, especially if there was a bigger race. Overall, these are both 249cc liquid-cooled engines, four-stroke, and dual overhead cam, four valve singles. They are set up really nicely. The compression ratio, the whole engine is pretty much identical. There's not really anything different between the powertrain at all. They keep it pretty much exactly the same and they're both five speeds. There's no six gear or anything like that. So, so far, a small bit of weight, a teeny tweak to the actual geometry, but not much else. The fork is exactly the same, it is just slightly tuned different. It is the same 48mm inverted fork, it's all adjustable, it has no differences between them. They're honestly a very similar bike. This is where it gets different though, that geometry tweak is the rake of the front fork goes from a 28 degree to a whole 27.8 degree. I don't know if many people would notice 0.2 of a degree, especially on a motocross style bike. But it is worth noting, especially when you add it um, to the fact that it has a different wheel size on the back. So the KX250X comes with that 18 on there, a little bit smaller, so it's going to be more forgiving. And it's going to, instead of accelerate or keep at speeds faster, it's going to accelerate a little bit better. So it's constantly always going to be going fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, slow. Whereas motocross bikes are, tend to be a little more on the power all the time, even through a corner. Pretty minor, but I mean, it does make a bit of a difference there. Oh well, I guess I just fell. <laughs> Let's get back to it. All right, so on the face of it, there is not a huge amount different. You can tell that they are very similar models, and I actually like that. They're gonna be based off the same framework and design, so they're gonna ride really similar. You still get a snappy overall feel. What changes is a few little details. So one, the tires, you do get enduro specific ones. I think it's Dunlop DT81s or something like that. So you're gonna get those on the X model and it's gonna give you a lot more traction. There'll be a lot soft compound. Obviously, if you did non-stop motocross, you'll probably chew the hell out of them and go through a set in like one moto, maybe a few motos. But a big difference they've done is they actually put the KX450 front master cylinder and brake controls on the 250X and it's going to have you a lot more stopping power and big big benefit is going to be the brake fade you're going to be on the brakes more 
for a longer period of time in comparison to something like the 250 race bike where you're going to be a little more i mean it's half an hour lap right or it's a half hour race time on motocross and that would be all it is so brake fade only needs to last half an hour and that's it those are two big differences and that will make a huge difference so your braking power and tire choice is going to make a huge difference the geometry change is going to make a big difference even though it's very small that rake difference from top to bottom really makes a big difference overall in the exact ride the drop of the bike so it's a little bit lower lower slacker it's kind of like an enduro mountain bike comparing it it will be easier more forgiving but a little less efficient not as fast rolling that doesn't matter as much especially when you've got an engine attached to you but it doesn't matter as much when you're doing longer more violent races where it's hopping over logs and being a bit more rougher it's always going to be harder to be more forgiving on a race bike whereas you can let the bike do it for you and that's the key differences there it would have been nice if they put on a front light in my mind um not that it's crazy necessary but it does make a little difference some woods are pretty dark and such and it does add a little feature i would look into if you can add that both have an electric start should be a fairly easy add i do think that kawasaki is on the right track this gncc stuff and the hair scrambles and the hard enduro is all coming back i'm surprised they didn't even come out with a two-stroke model but they're really strong in North America. They're really strong in Supercross, Motocross. So this is really just touching on it. GNCC is the first step in that. And then from there, it's gonna go into the hard enduro. They just need to find a way to make it, whether that's a 350 model or a really specific 250 model. As much fun as 450s are, they're a heavy bike to be uh, motocrossing. Oh, well, not motocrossing. They're a heavy bike to be hard enduring. That's way too much weight to be thrown around for two plus hours of riding. The track today I'm on is just a local little one. It is fantastic conditions today. You can tell it just rained. So we've got black tacky dirt, freshly mowed by the guy in front of me there. Tim does an excellent job. And it's just a fast, slowy track. It's non-stop, it's buried hills. And that's where the 250X may help. When you're going over logs and hills, are you gonna keep that much extra speed because of those minor geometry changes and wheel changes? You know, technically speaking, it's hard to argue with. I think you would, but then you come to these open stretches. It's nice that Kawasaki hasn't made such an off-road model that it's that different you'll still have that 250 power and you'll still be able to take off fast with the programmable mapping they'll have an aggressive mode they'll have a more racing mode and then from there you can customize it even further so you could potentially do three custom ones where there's a, a really aggressive hard enduro hair scramble mode then maybe an actual motocross mode and then i don't know what you do with the third one but instead of their kind of soft, medium, and aggressive mode, you know, that's kind of like setting up a bike for a beginner and you can build up to it realistically. You'd need a fast mode for one type of racing, a fast mode for another type of racing, and then maybe a third trail mode, which would make it a little bit softer, but on the longer rides, you'd be able to conserve a little bit of fuel. You wouldn't have the kickoff, but it would make a big difference if you're going out for like a two, three hour ride. Um, in just light trails and stuff where you're not racing so these are little things to think about these logs are always tricky when they're down anyway well hopefully this video helps someone looking for these bikes clarify the differences there's not a lot and that's kind of cool about the kawasaki models you know you look at the yamaha models you look at the honda models there's more and more differences but with the kawasaki it's a relatively similar bike all the hardware components realistically are the same except for the front brake they've got different tires but that's pretty easily swappable and then it's minor geometry changes that slack front end lower seat height and overall a smaller rear tire which is probably the cause of the lower seat height as well you know, you just need your feet on the ground a little bit more than you would motocross. Let's see if we can catch up here. Let's go around. This is always a fun section. It's a lot faster feeling than you want it to be. And um, there's a few hidden branches in the 
long grass there so you can't go full out. We had a pretty drought filled summer so once we did get rain it filled this area up pretty nicely and went really green. Anyway, the KX models are fantastic. Hopefully we'll get to try some out. I mean they look good. Kawasaki always makes a nice bike. It's funny how the dealers are kind of stuck with the colors they have. There's nothing wrong with Kawasaki green, but it'd be nice if you had like two choices. I'm not sure what color to do. Maybe a more all white model. And I know you can get different decal kits and stuff, but it's just funny. Funny kind of industry compared to the mountain bikes I normally review and such where they come with multiple different colors, different options. And right about here is where the crash happens. So right there, I just hit a stump. Um, and it flicked my peg up, ricocheted off my boot and into my knee. Mm. At first I was like, oh, that, that hurt a little bit. And then I looked down, I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, it's hard to see here, but yep, there's blood. And I was like, okay, my leg's drenched in blood. And it could be a mix of the sweat, the wet from the grass and the blood coming off. But uh, I'm like, I think my ride's over. And the pain is settling in slowly, but it, it's not drastic. So let's get out of here and let's see what just happened. That peg took a gash out of me. I actually ended up going and getting a couple stitches. We tried some steri strips, but they just would not hold just below my knee there. I think every time you bent down. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, there it is. Doesn't look too bad, but it's pretty deep. It's pretty gashed. I think it was two stitches in a couple weeks and then I cut them out and uh, we're good to go. That's after we cleaned it off a little bit, but anyway, thanks for watching guys. Hopefully this helped and remember to subscribe. We'll do more of the motocross stuff. Good luck.